Hello, Clinic Review family. It's so good to see you. I hope you're having, having a great day. Today, we're going to be talking about cancer prevention, but I'm not just going to be talking about content. I'm going to be also teaching you some strategies for taking tests. And I always like to do that because you do not have to know everything in order to pass NCLEX. You just need to know a subscribed amount of information, which most of you know, and you need to know how to read the questions correctly and how to answer the questions in a way that makes sense. So thank you to all of our channel subscribers. Uh, Clinic Reviews is the very best NCLEX review in the business, in my opinion. You can go to clinicreviews.com to sign up for an on-demand online clinic review. You can also go there to sign up for tutoring, small group tutoring with me or with Mark. And um, I think that's it. Did I already say thank you to our subscribers? I don't remember if I said thank you to our subscribers, but thank you to our subscribers. All right. The nurse is giving a group presentation on cancer prevention and recognition. Which statement by an older adult male client indicates understanding of the nurse's instructions? Cigarette smoking always causes lung cancer. Taking multivitamins will prevent me from developing cancer. If I have only one shot of whiskey a day, I probably will not develop cancer. I need to report the pain going down my legs to my healthcare provider. The nurse is giving a group presentation on cancer prevention and recognition, which statement by an older adult male indicates understanding of the nurse's instructions. Now, you can get this question right, even if you're not sure what the right answer is. Um, first of all, let's just look through the answer. Cigarette smoking always causes lung cancer. So if I'm not positive the answer is right, if it has an absolute in it, like always or never, unless I'm sure that the always and never is always or never true, I don't pick it. One of the ways they turn a right answer into a wrong answer is they add an absolute to it, like always. So cigarette smoking causes lung cancer, but it doesn't always cause lung cancer. So if the whole answer is not right, the answer is not right. Taking multivitamins will prevent me from developing cancer. There's a lot of benefits to taking multivitamins. Uh, preventing cancer is not one that I know of, never heard of that before. So I'm going to cross it off the list unless nothing else makes sense to me. If I have only one shot of whiskey a day, I probably will not develop cancer. That just, I just don't like that, that, that option. It's a hard liquor. Um, I don't think they have to cut out all alcohol uh, completely, but a shot of whiskey a day is hard liquor every day. I am not willing to say that couldn't cause cancer, that could harm the liver, that could cause liver cancer. I, I just don't like that answer. I need to report the pain going down my legs to my healthcare provider. All right, let me go back and reread the question. The nurse is giving a group presentation on cancer prevention and recognition. Okay, so I'm crossing A off because I don't like always. B, uh, I just never heard of that before. C, I don't like. Now D, I, I have to look at this because I'm like, what does that have to do with cancer? But I've said this many times before. I pay attention to answers that show an unexpected finding or a changing assessment because unexpected findings are things that need to be looked into more. And so if they suddenly start to have pain going down their legs and there's no reason for it, and we only know what they tell us. So as far as I can tell, there's no reason for them to have pain going down their legs. That's an unexpected finding. And it also is probably a changing assessment. I don't know that for sure, but it's also, it, it's definitely unexpected. There's no reason to, to think they they should have that pain. And so because I don't like any of the other answers, and this is a changing assessment, even though I don't know that it has what it has to do with necessarily, I'm going to pick that one. And that is the right answer. And you go back to prevention and recognition it has nothing to do with prevention, but it does have to do with recognition. So reporting unexpected symptoms, because if I'm teaching how to recognize cancer, I would say you've got to report any unexpected symptoms because we don't know always how it's going to present. Okay, so that's why that's the correct answer. The nurse is teaching a 47-year-old woman about recommended screening practices for breast cancer. Screening practices, screening, not prevention, screening. Okay, which statement by the client indicates understanding of the nurse's instructions? My mother and grandmother had breast cancer, so I am at risk. Well, that's true. There is definitely a genetic predisposition. I get a mammogram every two years since I turned 30. So mammograms aren't recommended until 40. 
for women who feel they're at risk and 45 for everybody else. So 30 is a little young. A clinical breast exam is performed every month since I turned 40. A clinical breast exam is not necessarily every month. A self-breast exam they should be doing on their own, uh, but not a clinical breast exam. That means you'd have to go into the clinic every month, and that's silly. A CT scan will be done every year after I turn 50. False. It's a mammogram that's done every year after you turn 50, for sure. So screening, we don't screen with CT scan. We don't screen with clinical breast exams every month. We don't screen with mammograms every two years starting at age 30. So family history is a screening tool. Okay, you look at family history to see if they're at risk. And if they're at risk, then you do some other things. So that's a, that's a legitimate screening tool to say, my mom, you know, what's your family history of cancer? So that's, that's the correct answer. A 72-year-old client recovering from lung cancer surgery asked the nurse to explain how she developed cancer when she has never smoked, which factor may explain the possible cause. A diagnosis of diabetes treated with insulin and diet, an exercise regimen of jogging three miles four times a week, a history of cardiac disease, or advancing age. Okay, recovering from lung cancer surgery says, how did I get it? I never smoked. So, so what are some of the other risk factors for cancer? That's just before we look at the answers, let's just look at the other risk factors. Well, an impaired immune system. So our primary defense against cancer is our immune system because cancer is an out of control cell reproduction. So our, our, many of our cells are constantly reproducing like skin, right? If, if your skin is sloughing off and reproducing, that's why skin cancer has such a high risk. Our GI cells, particularly the inner lining of the GI, constantly reproducing because stuff's getting little harmful things. Uh, foods may go through and cause a cut. It's constantly reproducing. Muscle cells reproduce. Um, heart cells don't reproduce at all, which is why you've never heard of heart cancer. So the cells that tend to reproduce a lot are the, are the ones that are more likely to get cancer. An immune system that can't control cell growth, because it's the immune system that helps control cell growth, um, will put us at risk. Okay. So an impaired immune system puts us at risk. Obesity is a risk factor. Getting older is a risk factor. Family history is a risk factor. Genetics, poor nutrition is a risk factor, mostly because poor nutrition, uh, impairs the immune system. Stress, in my opinion, not just my opinion, stress is a risk factor. So those are risk factors. Those are just in general across the board. Those are risk factors. So, okay, let's look at these then. So a diagnosis of diabetes is a risk factor for lung cancer. Okay. Not that I know of. Never heard of that before. If I don't like any of the other answers, I'll come back to that. Exercising uh, every week, four times a week is a risk factor for cancer. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. History of cardiac disease is a risk factor for cancer. Well, you've never heard of heart cancer. I've never heard of heart cancer. So cardiac disease uh, is not a risk factor for cancer. Advancing age. Well, as you get older, you're more likely to develop cancer because it's, you have just more statistical time for uh, out of control cell growth to occur. Your immune system does get weaker as you get older. So an advancing age is definitely a risk factor for cancer. The nurse suspects metastasis from left breast cancer to the thoracic spine when the client has which symptom? Vomiting, back pain, frequent urination, cyanosis of the toes. The nurse suspects metastasis from left breast cancer to the thoracic spine. Hope you know that's the back. When the client has which symptom? Vomiting. All right. So let's say which, which one has anything to do with the thoracic spine? Vomiting? No. Back pain, yes. Frequent urination, no. Cyanosis of the toes, no. So um, the lumbar spine could affect urination. That's the only one that really I would maybe consider. But look, if you get a question like this and you're like, I don't know the answer to that, then pick the most obvious one. It's a back problem, pick the back pain. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, you don't have to know everything about everything. Just use your common sense, y'all. Use your common sense. Okay. 
The nurse explains to a client that which risk factor of those listed most likely contributed to the client the client's primary liver carcinoma, liver carcinoma, infection with hepatitis B, consuming a diet high in animal fat, exposure to radon, or familial polyposis. All right, liver. Which one of these diseases has something to do with the liver? Well, hep B affects the liver. High fat, I don't know. I guess you could have a fatty liver. Exposure to radon, I, I don't know. I don't even know what familial polyposis is. I don't know what that is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my common sense. I'm going to pick the one thing that I know relates to the liver, just like the last time I picked the one that I know relates to the back. Okay. So you do not have to know everything about everything. Use your common sense. And does that mean you'll get 100% of the questions right? No. Do you have to get 100% of the questions right to pass NCLEX? No. Okay. Use your common sense, y'all. Six, which information must the organ transplant nurse emphasize before a client is discharged? Organ transplant. So this is someone who just got an organ transplant. Taking, taking immunosuppressant medications increases your risk for cancer and the need for screenings. Well, yes, because if you're suppressing your immune system, you're suppressing the primary way your body fights against cancer. You're at increased risk for cancer when you reach 60 years of age. Well, that's true. Immunosuppressant medications will decrease your risk for developing cancers. False. After six months, you may stop immunosuppressant meds and your risk for cancer will be the same as that of the general population. So if you don't know this, people who have had an organ transplant will take at least one immunosuppressant for life. Okay, one immunosuppressant for life. So they're not stopping their immunosuppressants after six months. So B and A are both true, but which one is more important to express? Well, if you say it when you reach 60, you're not telling them you're at increased risk now. You're at increased risk now. I don't know how old they are now, but I'm assuming it's not, they're not 60. So I need to tell them they're at increased risk now because they're taking a they're taking an immunosuppressant. They're, they don't have to wait till they're 60 to be at increased risk. Seven, a client who is scheduled to undergo radiation for prostate cancer is admitted to the hospital by the nurse, which statement by the client is most important to communicate to the healthcare provider. So I always report unexpected findings, y'all. I report unexpected findings. So they're coming in for prostate cancer, admitted to the hospital by the nurse. Which one I'm gonna communicate? The unexpected finding, I'm allergic to iodine. Okay, well, that may be unexpected, but they're not having a procedure that involves iodine. So radiation does not involve iodine. If, if they were having a cardiac cath, then yeah or something with contrast, yes, but they're not doing anything like that. So I don't know why I'd report that. My urinary stream is very weak. Well, that's expected with prostate cancer. My legs are numb and weak. Well, that's not expected. That's not expected. I am incontinent when I cough. That's not unexpected. I mean, that that's, they, they have a lot of urinary symptoms when they have an enlarged prostate or whatever. I don't know why they'd be incontinent when they cough, except maybe they have trouble emptying their bladder and they just express urine when they cough. So the only one that's unexpected here is C. And don't say, well, they, D could, well, I don't know about D, it could be unexpected. Okay. Which one are you more concerned about, y'all? Legs are numb and weak or they're incontinent when they cough. Okay. Okay. Well, I hope that helped you. And I hope you have a great rest of your week. It is Thanksgiving week at the time that I'm doing this. So happy Thanksgiving. I am thankful for all of you and I'm thankful for all that I have. God bless you.